Hello Divination and welcome to our brand new mini series creating client documentation to empower your clients and save you time. In this mini series we'll be showing you five ways you can create client documentation with the primary purpose of educating and empowering your clients while you save time in the process. In the world of web design, there are common struggles all designers face on every project. These may include getting information you need before starting a project, educating your client on how to use their website when, when the site is completed, and so on. Automating the tasks that you do repeatedly can save you a lot of time. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a website questionnaire. This is the form I would require to be filled in before I send a quotation. In order to achieve this form design, we're going to need two things in place. We're going to need the Gravity Forms plugin and also we're going to use some CSS to customize the form layout. So without wasting a lot of time, let me show you how we managed to create this form. So let's go in, let me show you how to install this plugin and how to set up this form. So I'm going to go into my WordPress dashboard and then I'm going to come here to plugins click on add new. Now my plugin, the, the Gravity Forms plugin has already been downloaded onto my downloads folder. So I'm just going to click on upload plugin, choose file. And then I'm just going to click my downloads and then just double click on Gravity Forms, click install. Okay. So now that it's installed, what we need to do here is to just click on activate plugin. Okay. So now that your plugin has been uh, activated, what you need to do is to click on the settings and then paste your license key. Click on next. And then here, I'm just going to leave this as it is. Click on next. Currency. Now, because we're not going to be using um, any paid services for this, I'll just leave all this as uh, normal. Click next. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a form. Okay, so let's give this form a name. So let's call this web questionnaire. And then I'm going to click on create form. Okay, so now that we are set in um, Gravity Forms, it's time now to add the fields. So let's start here with the name, email, and, and phone number. So I'm going to come here to advanced field. So I'm going to click on name. I'm going to click on email. I also need the phone number. So I'm going to click on phone. So the next field is company or organization. So I'm going to come here, click. And then I'm just going to rename the field like that. It's okay. That's looking good. And then we also need title. So I'm going to click update the field label. And then we're also going to need the website URL. So I'm going to click one more time and then update the field label. So this information that we've just added here on this form is vital because you want to make sure you have this information just in case you need to get in touch with the customer. So for example, if you have a form and you don't have the customer's phone number, that's going to be a headache. So having all this information in place is ideal in collecting all this information that we need. So the next section is where we ask the customer what the company goals are. Go to a paragraph text and then let's add this information. So I'm just going to add the question, I re uh, the information I require. And then in the description box, what you could also do is just to give an idea or an example of what information would be required for this. So I'm going to paste my example. So the next part is where we get to ask the client if there is any call to actions needed on the website. So again, I'm just going to go in, update the field label and also add the description. And in the description here, this is where we say the example could be a call, a purchase, a sign up or a donate. So let's go on to the next part. And this is the part where we get to ask what functionality the client needs on their website. So let's paste this in the uh, field label. And then we also need to add the description. Okay, so the next part is where we get to ask the client how many pages they need for their website and also examples of the pages. Okay, so that's the example. Either it could be the home, about us, contact, and so on. Okay, so next I'm going to click on the paragraph text. And this is where we get to ask if the client needs a domain name or if they have a hosting account. Okay, so this next one is where we get to ask the client if they're going to be uh, updating their website by themselves. This is quite important because 
if they don't, this is where now you can either have some videos to help them out or uh, allow them to pay an extra charge for you to maintain their website. So what we need here is some radio buttons. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and make some changes to this. So in the field label, we're going to enter the, um, the question, which is, will you or one of your staff want to edit the pages you manage on the website? So the first question is, I mean, the first option here is going to be yes. And the second one is going to be no. And then we're just going to get rid of this third one. Okay. So now when they get to this part, they have a choice of either choosing yes or no. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. Again, on this one, we're going to have some uh, radio buttons. We are going to be asking roughly what their skill, skill level is like if they want to work on the website. Okay, so I'm just going to paste the question here. So the technical skill level, now this is where I can get to um, describe the three options here. So the first one here is, I don't know too much about computers and would need a lot of direction. The second one is, I'm capable, but would need some clear direction. And then finally, this one here just states that I'm advanced and can learn very quickly. Okay, so you can you can see now where, where this is going. This is going to allow us to have an idea of the client that we're going to be working with. So let's add the final part. So in the final part here, this is where we get to ask the client if they have any other comments. This is quite cool because there may be something that you may have, may have missed in all these um, questions. So this is where they get the opportunity to add the information that you've may, you may have missed out. Okay, so it looks like we have everything that we need. For now, I'm going to go ahead and click update form, and then we're going to do a quick preview. So to preview, I'm just going to click this button. Okay, so this is the preview of the form, but this may look different when we paste the uh, shortcode onto our page. So in our form preview, we can see that the name, phone, company, title, current website URL, it's all right below each other. Now this is wasting a lot of space. So we can reduce this space by having the email and the phone next to each other in two columns. And the same applies to what we have right here in the bottom. So in order to achieve this, we're going to use some CSS classes. Now, let me show you how to do that. So let's go back to here. Let's go back here into our form. So let's start off with email. So let's click on email. We need to click on appearance. And then right here in the CSS class, we need to paste this code. GF underscore left underscore half. Okay. Then we're just going to collapse that. And then the next one is the phone. So we need to do the same, but this time we need to change left to right. So I'm just going to go in and amend that, collapse that. And then what you need to do is to do that for the rest of them. So left, right, left, right. So after we've done that, you'll see that these will be next to each other. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and complete that. Okay, so now that we've um, added the uh, classes, I'm just going to click on update. And if we do, if we refresh this preview, we should see that these will now be next to each other. So let's go ahead and refresh. Okay, and there you have it. So now the form height has been reduced because we've just made these go side by side. Okay, so now that we're happy with our preview, we're going to create a new page and then um, paste that shortcode and see how that page looks. So I'm going to come here to pages, click on add new. So let's give this page a title for now. I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to call it test and then um, click on use the divi builder, click insert columns. I need one column and in the column, I'm just going to add a text module. Now that I've added the text module, you can see right here that uh, gravity forms has added this button, which allows us to add the shortcode. So if I click on add form, all I need to do here is to select the form and the form we uh, we were working on is the web questionnaire. Um, I don't need the form. Uh, I don't need to display the title for now. And then I'm just going to click on insert form. So now this shortcode here is going to be the shortcode that displays the form. So let me go ahead and click on save and exit and then click publish. 
So now we're gonna view the page and see what that form looks like. Okay, so there you have it. So this is the form that we've just created. So one of the most important things here is to make sure that these fields are mandatory because we need to make sure that all these uh, fields are filled in before we can actually receive the form. So let me show you quickly how you can do that. So let's go back to our form. So I'm gonna go back to dashboard. Okay, so I'm here in my dashboard. I'm just gonna go to forms and then I'm gonna click on forms. And then this is the web questionnaire that we are working on. So I'm gonna click on edit. Now to make these fields mandatory, it's very straightforward. All you need to do is to click in here and then just click this button which says required. And then now that makes that um, field mandatory. Okay, so go ahead and do that to the rest of the form. Okay, so once we're done with that, go ahead and click on update form. Okay, so that's looking good. So we're gonna take a look at our page one more time to see if these changes have taken place. So our page is called tests. So now you can see that the, um, the fields here are now mandatory. So they can't proceed and send the quote without filling in these. So as you can see, if I try to send the form, all these fields are highlighted and then it's also showing an error message right here. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. We will be producing daily video quick tips similar to what you've seen today. So subscribing and following us on our social media platforms ensures that you are notified every time we post a video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments box below. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.